Hello, I'm Chris Kelly, Applications Engineer with Keysight Technologies, and today I'll be demonstrating key, uh, Keysight solution to functional wireless performance measurement in a crowded environment. This is called coexistence testing, and because we have so many wireless devices on the air today, with the IoT we're predicting 20 billion devices in the year 2020, the interference between these devices running dissimilar protocols has become significant, in some cases severe. So the way you measure the performance of your device in a crowded environment is called coexistence test. This was defined by American National Standards Institute in a document C6327, published in 2017. For medical devices, this was refined in another document, TIR69, which specifically addresses how to test this for medical devices going into a healthcare environment which can carry risks beyond those of a normal Wi-Fi device or a Bluetooth device. Today's demonstration, we're going to be using a Bluetooth device and interfere with it with a Wi-Fi signal from a signal generator. In every one of these cases, and there are four different ways to make this measurement, in every one of these cases, you need to use a uh, spectrum analyzer capable of real-time spectrum analysis, RTSA, in order to make this measurement. The reason for that is that these digital devices have such short signals that a swept spectrum analyzer won't see them and adequately measure them. So today we have a Bluetooth speaker, which will be our device under test, playing music from a Bluetooth MP3 player, and that interference by a Wi-Fi signal which is incompatible with Bluetooth in a way, that is they can't see and avoid each other, uh, that interference can be measured and actually heard on the speaker of the uh, wireless speaker uh, Bluetooth device. In this section, let me describe the devices that we're using to make this uh, wireless coexistence measurement. In the middle, we have the two chambers that contain the two devices, a Bluetooth speaker and its paired device the uh, MP3 player that will be uh, communicating from one chamber to the other, sending music over to the speaker. Because this, the Bluetooth speaker is in a completely RF tight chamber, we brought out the sound to a small speaker uh, externally so we can hear it. Between the two chambers we have an attenuator that reduces the signal levels for the RF signal between those two. The attenuator sim simulates an increase in distance between the DUT, the speaker, and the DUT pair device, the MP3 player. This will help you determine how far apart your devices can operate in a given RF environment. You would begin, by the way, in characterizing the target environment that this would go into. In a hospital, you may actually want to go into the hospital with an instrument like the Keysight Field Fox and do a quick survey of what kinds of signals are present and therefore what signals should you use in your simulated interference. Then below these two chambers where the devices are, we have the uh, Keysight MXA, which is a spectrum analyzer that is able to look at these very fast signals using real-time spectrum analysis. Today we're looking at the range from 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz, which is the ISM band where most Wi-Fi is mo uh, most common, as well as Bluetooth. Below it, we have a signal generator, the Keysight MXG, and that will be generating a Wi-Fi signal to interfere with the Bluetooth that's going on in the chambers. All of these are coupled together with antennas inside the chambers so that you have an actual device antenna, not a coaxial connection, to make this measurement on a real complete device. The reason for this is that some devices have built-in antennas and don't have a coaxial adapter to allow you to make a, a, a wired measurement. So we're going to be making a wireless measurement on two devices separated in the two chambers, coupled by the attenuator and with the sound coming out through the speaker. Now let me show you what's inside the chambers. In the first chamber, we have the DUT, the device being tested, which is a, a Bluetooth wireless speaker. The audio from this speaker is sent to a connector on the back of the chamber, which then comes to the external speaker on the outside. In the other chamber, we have a small MP3 player which will be playing Bluetooth through the uh, wired connection but is coupled by antennas inside of these two chambers. 
Okay, so we've now established the Bluetooth link between the MP3 player and the uh, speaker, and we're playing some music through there. We're going to interfere with that Bluetooth signal using a Wi-Fi signal uh, right in the middle of the ISM band. The 2.4 gigahertz band is a most common place for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and, and these kinds of devices. Again, because we have dissimilar devices, they can't actually uh, actively adapt to each other's behavior, but the frequency hopping in the Bluetooth signal can avoid channels where it finds interference, where it finds errors, I should say. Um, it can't actually see the Wi-Fi signal, but it can avoid those channels that it's hopping through where it gets failures, where it gets errors. So we have the uh, music playing in the speaker, and on the MXA, there's a Bluetooth hopping going on. The Bluetooth player in this chamber is coupled through the attenuator to the speaker in this chamber. And we're going to introduce a Wi-Fi signal and then raise the amplitude on that Wi-Fi signal till we have a threshold of interference on the music, which we'll audibly be able to detect. So I turn on the Wi-Fi signal, which appears in the middle of the spectrum. And then the music is still doing just fine. But I raise the, up the amplitude. I raise up the amplitude on that signal. And you begin to hear the music breaking up. That's because it's losing some of the data packets carrying the music. If I raise that even further, I can lose the link completely. Now, the strength of that signal, the relative strength of those two signals, uh, is the threshold of uh, functional wireless performance failure in the DUT. And again, through the attenuator, we've adjusted the simulated distance between those two. When I turn off the Wi-Fi signal, you can see another interesting effect, and that is that in the middle of the spectrum, the Bluetooth has adapted, that it's moved the use of channels away from those channels where it saw interference. This is one adaptive behavior that Bluetooth and, and some other uh, signals can, can manage. Um, it, re it remains an absent area on the spectrum, but uh, a, a, an even stronger signal can completely take out that wired uh, connection, wireless connection. At some point we'll actually lose the connection between the uh, the speaker and the DUT. So this is the kind of wireless coexistence testing that's becoming necessary today. Again it's defined by ANSI standard C6327. For medical devices check also the AAMI TIR69 which focuses on healthcare devices where risk is an important consideration. Uh, what signals, what amplitudes, what uh, densities of signals must your device be able to cope with, or at least to specify what that device can do. So I hope you've learned uh, a bit about uh, C6327, the kind of instruments that Keysight offers to help you make this measurement in a very uh, useful way that can make your device uh, more robust in its target environment. Thanks very much for watching.